one of the applications of uh, transistors is you can use it as a switch as a non-mechanical switch what does this mean? So suppose you have a circuit in which depending on whether you're getting some output or not you automatically want some other part of the circuit to either turn or, or off so that's a non-mechanical switch you want it to happen automatically within uh, within your circuit so uh, you can use a transistor in that way let's see how how do we draw the circuit so let's first put the transistor itself base collector Better. I'll put base resistance, collector resistance, and I'm going to bias it up over here with plus VCC. In case you're not familiar with this notation, what this plus VCC like this means, it's basically just, it's like saying I have a DC source, which is plus VCC but it's a shorthand notation we avoid drawing all of these extra lines we just draw it this way so this is so there's a, a, a positive voltage being supplied at this point so i'm going to put my input over here between the base and the emitter v in and i'm going to take my output over here at the collector How should we write the DC load line for this equation? Once again, look at this line over here from VCC to ground and apply uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law over there. So VCC is equal to, if I mark the currents, this is IC this is i e and this is i b then v c c is i c r c that's a potential drop across this resistance r c plus v c e that's the potential drop between the collector and the emitter so this is the dc load line equation now let's try and analyze what happens when we give it when we give the circuit an input. So first case, suppose there is no input. If V in is zero, then there is no current IB which is going to be flowing into the base. If IB is zero, then IC which is beta times IB is zero. Now if you look at this equation, if IC is 0, then VCE is just VCC, but what is the potential at the output? This is output potential is just the potential at the collector. So it is just VC and VC is just, if you look at it from the ground, it is just VCE because the emitter is already at ground. Emitter is grounded, so VC is VCE, which is VCC from the load line equation. So when V in is 0, V out is maximum. And let's look at the other way. What happens if V in is not zero, but it has some high value that I give it? Well, if V in is high, then there will be a high current passing through it. So then IC also becomes high. And now V out which is VC is 
VCC minus ICRC which is small because IC is large. So V in high implies V out low. So this is a circuit in which if the input is high the output is low, if the input is high the output is low. Did I say that twice? Input low, output high, input high, output low. So this automatically changes the state of the output depending on the state of the input. So you can use this as a switch. And this has a lot of useful applications, especially in digital uh, electronics. If you want to uh, have on off states, like for example, in computers, then you can use this. Uh, by the way, so far I have always had the emitter junction always directly grounded. But in principle, that need not be true. So for example, if I have a circuit that looks like this, plus VCC, let's put a resistance uh, for the collector, base collector emitter. Let's put some VBB over here. And I can also put a resistance over here at the emitter emitter resistance. What does the load line equation look like now? Once again, apply Kirchhoff's voltage law over here. So VCC is going to be equal to base current, emitter, collector current, emitter current. So VCC is First, the potential drop across RC, so that's ICRC. Then, from the collector to the emitter is VCE. And then, across the emitter resistance, IERE. But now remember that IC and IE are almost the same because ID is very small. So I can write VCC approximately. I'll put IC and IC and IE to be the same. Let's call them IE. RC plus RE plus VCE. So this way I can get a, uh, a, load, a load line equation also for the, uh, in the presence of this emitter resistance. Let's look at one more kind of transistor biasing and this is called voltage divider bias. Let's draw the circuit for this. You probably remember this kind of circuit. We have seen this back when we were discussing Thevenin's theorem. This is called a voltage divider. So there is a plus VCC at the top. Uh, that voltage is being provided to this setup with R1 and R2. And the output of the, uh, the, the voltage output between R1 and R2 at this point uh, is given by VCC times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So we call this a voltage divider because you can adjust the values of R1 and R2 and accordingly get whatever desired value of voltage you want. So this is what we are going to use right now. So this over here is called the voltage divider bias. Base connector emitter. We can put base current, collector current, emitter current. So let's write down the load line equation. Well, this is the same as what we just wrote down on the last page. VCC is ICRC plus VCE plus IERE from here 
which I can write approximately as IE or C plus IE plus BCE. Also, what can I say about the potential over here? The potential over here, which is just VB, is VCC R2 divided by R1 plus R2. This is just because of the fact that R1 and R2 form a voltage divider. In fact, you can also do the following. If you take If you consider this part of the circuit, and you can apply Thevenin's theorem. So, so you Thevenize this circuit what you get is VTH is VCC R2 over R1 plus R2 and RTH is just R1 parallel R2 and now the Thevenin equivalent circuit for this is And now from here you can now you see this looks very similar to what we had before when we had the uh, the fixed base bias. So you can apply the same kind of uh, equations that we had over there. If we look at this part of the circuit, this loop then you can write down VTH is the potential difference across RTH is IB times RTH plus from the base to the emitter this is VBE and then the potential difference across the emitter resistance is I E R E. V B E is just the forward bias uh, resistance of a diode. So this is going to be 0.3 volts if you're using a germanium diode, 0.7 volts if you're using a silicon diode. Essentially it's some known number. You don't have to worry about what V B E is. Uh, however, we can simplify this other part of it. So this is I B RTH plus VBE plus this is beta plus 1 times RE and from this beta plus 1 IBRE so from here you can get your base current which is going to be VTH minus VBE divided by So here's how you analyze a circuit which is in voltage divided bias. Now we still have a little more time but I don't want to start the next topic. The next topic is uh, the CE amplifier and I think that discussion will take some time so I don't want to start it right now. Okay let's, let's stop this lecture here itself and uh, Next, uh, for the next set of lectures, if I need some more time, maybe I'll exceed the one hour a little bit because I saved five minutes over here. Uh, yeah, so that's it for now.